How goes it? I'm Pablo, you know. I like to think of myself as a pretty tolerable person, but I need something new. Something that'll make people go, wow, Pablo, f you. That's not good enough. The Wii U. Oh, oh what the f, dude? Everyone has one, me and the population of Illinois. 13 million units sold, and it came in a distant last place to its competitors. Even then, the people who still have one don't even play it. What once was a beloved console turned into a sequel, which turned into a useless paperweight with the video game industry's biggest names on it. Even worse, the games. No, some of them aren't bad, believe it or not, but there's no variety in the Wii U's library. There was a huge flurry of Mario, Zelda, Kirby, and the rest were either spin-offs, sequels, or just straight-up dog sh And to my knowledge, there was never any new IPs that came to the system. And if you want to say that Nintendo lands a new IP, then good luck in the real world, pal. I'm using you as a referral for my next job. Imagine being told that your birthplace is the Wii U. That's like telling the kids that they're destined for failure at birth. But Nintendo made it happen. Look, we all knew the Wii U had potential, but it was always wasted. It was like the developers turned their brains off when it came to making a new game for the system. But that's when Nintendo came in and took a big shit right on our plate. And if you know me, I love shit Nintendo. Oh. Who the fuck are you? Splatoon is a 4v4 third person shooter for the Wii U, and after a long time of trial and error in terms of development, Nintendo's Nogami, Amano, and Sagayuchi came to E3 2014 to reveal their new online multiplayer game, Splatoon. E3, man, what a time to be alive. Nintendo showed off a ton of great things Super Smash Bros., the reveal of Amiibos, Yoshi's Woolly World, Super Mario Maker, and Splatoon. And guess who wasn't there to watch it? Aside from most of you, Neither did I. At this point, the media and I didn't exactly know each other, so this completely slipped by my radar. And that's a shame because this is an event that I wouldn't want to miss nowadays. The first time I got to see Splatoon in action was right around its launch date of May 29th, 2015. Marketing was heavy because when you have a game that looks like this, on a console like that, with a title that would scare Grandpa, it makes sense that Nintendo wouldn't hit the brakes with its commercials. And I was hooked. Now all I needed was a Wii U. But there's where we come into our first problem, getting a Wii U. I feel like wanting the Wii U is a problem in and on itself, but go on. Not stock-wise, there is enough for the whole family. Money-wise, I'm 12 at this point. I can't get a job, so I made a deal with my dad that if I maintained good grades and stayed on top of my chores, I would get my own Wii U in spring of 2016. Now all I gotta drop is my self-respect. Perfect! I got the Mario Kart 8 Wii U Deluxe Set Edition. And I already had a roster in mind in terms of games, but I wasn't sure if I wanted Splatoon anymore. I mean, just look at it, it's threatening. Show it to anyone, see how they react. Yo. But lucky for me, in the summer of 2016, I got to play Splatoon for the first time in the Splatoon Test Fighter, and... <laughs> I loved it. So in fall of 2016, for my 13th birthday, I got Splatoon, and I gotta say... It's not bad. Well, this is what my life has been leading up to. Years of evolution, to play a fucking new game. Let's do it. Launching the game. Holy fuck, it's a game! So the first time you launch the game, you create your character. And look at all of this variety. You know, I'm a big fan of blue, but I'll just go black today. Now it's time to play the tutorial, and what the fuck is that?! Motion controls? Whose idea was this? Look, I know motion controls is the majority of the Splatoon community's preferred way to play, but as someone who plays shooters for most of their life, I don't need this. And also, I don't want people walking in the room and seeing me turning my big-ass controller to look around in-game. Opening the lobby, we can see that we have many modes to choose from. There is regular battle, ranked battle, private battle, and regular battle with friends. You know, ranked battles are locked until I reach level 10, so let's just start a match. Alright, time to critique this 8 year old game made for the Wii U. Um, don't, don't you go, go outside? outside? Now, I'm not picky when it comes to graphics, but this game never looked the best. Now, if I compared it to what it looked like in its beta days, then yeah, sure, it looks perfect, but looking at some other titles on the Wii U, eh, Turf War is the mode that everyone will play, and it's pretty straightforward. Shoot the floor, maintain your turf for 3 minutes straight, and you'll win. But you really thought it was gonna be that easy? Of course not, you fucking idiot. You gotta play against people. They're huge assholes who abuse every weapon's broken features. So every main weapon comes with a sub-weapon and a special. Rollers are a piece of shit. 
Blasters are the equivalent of slapping someone in the face with unwashed hands. Gallon weapons, Splattershot Pros, and the Jet Squelchers are just a bunch of bullshit. And if you use any of these weapons on screen, this isn't personal, but this is for you. Sub weapons are nothing special, just four standard bombs. One that rolls a bit, the other sticks to a surface with a suction cup. The third follows the target if locked on, but it's pretty easy to avoid. And the fourth is a water balloon. The other sub weapons are either an ink wall, reveal players if thrown at them, flow them, and the others either use as a beacon, a mine, and a sprinkler. Before we get to specials, let's talk about how the gamepad's finally useful. Finally, the answer to my prayers. So the touchscreen shows a map no matter where you are in game. Startup screen, plaza, lobby, and matches and while you wait you can play a little minigame called squid jump there are other mini games you can get but you gotta buy the amiibos and man that's some bull you also get gear which is pretty useful in game and special weapons and unnecessary paywall but they look cool you can also use the gamepad to see the map in real time enemies will be revealed if they step on your ink or if you can't can kill them you loser all your teammates are on the map and if you tap one of them you'll do a squid jump flying over to where they are the moment you tap their icon honestly pretty cool feature also pretty fucking stupid because it'll show a signal to anyone nearby and if no one's protecting you you, yeah, good luck. Specials. We got a bubbler that protects you for a few seconds. And if you make contact with your teammates, they also get a shield. The Kraken. Another escape special. You turn into an invincible giant squid. Bomb rush. Not much to say about them other than they're a good way to crash your Wii U. Because when someone activates it, the frame rate dips. Echo Locator. Just reveals enemies for a few seconds. But in my opinion, it's kind of a waste since there's already a sub weapon that does that. And the last three being the Ink Zuka, an Ink rocket launcher that fires crystals of ink. The killer whale. Put her up and let it blow. Anyone who's in the wave will get killed instantly and the ink strike pull about tap anywhere on the map and it'll launch an ink like tornado killing anyone in its range but what's an unbalanced shooter without maps there are 16 maps and there are two for regular battle and two for rank battle all four maps are randomly selected through rotation and that rotation time is four hours jesus Every four hours you get interrupted by the game by these two. Just spam the A button through their unskippable dialogue. But easily the best maps are Urchin Underpass, Erewhon Mall, Walleye Warehouse, Port Mackerel, and Flounder Heights. Not one of my all-time favorites, but still up there. But easily, my absolute most favorite map is Mahi Mahi Resort. Fighting on top of a platform in a pool with a chip like a squid, and after a minute 35, this little jingle plays. And then the water level drops, and the rest of the map rises. God, I love this map. And there's absolutely nothing they can do to ruin it for me. God damn it! The other maps, well, I don't hate them, but I see them way more often than my personal favorites. But then, when God wants to remind you that you suck, he gives you... Oh my god. It's an ambush. Salty Splat Rig. Bluefin Depot. Hammerhead Bridge. Mori Towers. Museum Dalfosino. Whew. I think we're safe. Holy sh Camp f***ing Triggerfish. This is by far one of the worst maps in the game. Like, who made this? I hate maps where it just gets so easy to get into your spawn. And I know that's the point, claim your turf. But this map is just a piece of sh I hate it. Aside from turf 4, we have rank battles, which is just a competitive mode for the game. Rather than it being a 3 minute match, it's a 5 minute match where you have to overtake your enemies in 3 different modes that are in rotation. Splat zones. Ink the square and maintain it until your timer runs out. If you lose it to your enemies, you get a second timer and you have to drain that before getting to the main one. And be careful because there are some maps that have two small zones which make it into a competitive pain. Tower control is just escorting the payload to its destination. Getting through checkpoints and keeping the enemies off of it, easy. And the last one is Rainmaker. Take the oversized Ink Zuka to its destination and if you keep it for too long, yeah that happens. Splatoon has some flaws but it's still a solid game that I'm you, but should you still be playing it today? Playing Splatoon in 2023. Well, the game is not dead, but the community is not as big as it was before. Mainly because a new console launched in March of 2017 and a sequel launched in the summer of that year. The queue times are much longer since not that many people are playing it, and you'll most likely come into contact with the people you were playing with in your last game. But other than that, there are a lot of hackers now. And like, at least every other match I find a hacker. The hacks consisted of someone covering the whole map in their ink, or they'll have unlimited sub weapons, or they just can't die. There were some cool ones. This one guy had a hack that changed the color of our ink to be red instead of orange. And overall, the game's controls and graphics feel really dated when you play the sequels, but unfortunately, that's what happens when the new IP releases on an underpowered console that just can't get it up these days. And if you're just no getting Splatoon for the Wii U, where the f*** have you been? Splatoon also has a story mode, but that's another mess for another day because we already unpacked a lot. So now, let's move on to Splatoon 2. Yo, get the f*** out of my house! I did it!